Please tell me you're seeing this too. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite TV shows. And this is going to be my last TV review of the decade. So this is going to be a special one. Because, uh, oh my gosh, this is it. The final season of Mr. Robot. One of the most underrated TV shows of all time. Period. And this season of Mr. Robot is one of the greatest things I've ever seen on TV. It is on par with the final season of Breaking Bad. Just imagine that. On par with Breaking Bad. And I've never said this to any TV show before. This is a really special one. Mr. Robot is created by Sam Esmail, and it's about a vigilante hacker, Elliot, whose dad passed away because of radiation leakage caused by a huge corporation called E Corp, also known as Evil Corp. So Elliot and his sister Darlene and a few other hackers formed F Society, a hacker group that tries to remove all debts and mess up the economy. And that happened, and it's known as the Five Nine Hack. And that's basically season one which I thought was really solid, very creative, and entertaining, despite a slow start. Then we have season 2, which exceeded my expectations so much so that I gave it a 10 out of 10, even though it was more slow-paced than seasons 1 and 3. It is the most mentally challenging, psychologically profound, and mind-bending. Every single episode offered something new, clever, shocking on the table, tons of great scenes. We also learn more about the Dark Army, an army of Chinese hackers led by a man-slash-woman by the name of White Rose, played by B.D. Wong, who disguised himself as the sh chief of security in China. On season 3, the tone of the show becomes slightly different. It's way more dramatic than it is challenging. It's filled with action. One of the episodes is filmed like it was in one take a la Birdman. The filler episode is powerful, it's emotional, and the episodes between the two are all friggin' nerve-wracking and packed with twists and turns. The Dark Army closes in, the FBI closes in, Vera, one of the enemies that Elliot made, re reappeared, and it was really intense. And then we have season 4, the final season, and this time the cinematography is slightly different as well. The tone is slightly different, more claustrophobic, less artsy and experimental, but it suits the current state of the storylines. Nonetheless, we still have the fantastic acting, well-written dialogues, clever montages, entertaining action sequences, and a great score. And boy, is this season one of the most insane things that have happened to TV history. This is like the exact opposite of the final season of Game of Thrones. So yeah, Double D, take notes, because this is how you end a series. So we're off to 401, Unauthorized, the first episode of the season. I like that they changed the episode title format after they shut down at the end of episode, at, at the end of season three. And now the titles are following the HTTP errors, starting with 4, 401, Unauthorized. I'm not a huge computer expert, so um, leave me alone. But this episode is bold, it's ambitious, right off the bat it picks back up from the from one of the last scenes in the last episode and 5 minutes in, 5 minutes, one of the main characters just died. I'm not gonna say who, but fuck, it was shocking. There's a slight change in the title sequence as well, which is pretty cool. Then afterwards, we jump right back into action with Elliot trying to use this guy, Freddy, who's a pedo, to gain some info on E Corp. And then at the same time, the Dark Army was spying on the whole operation. It was real tense and suspenseful. The operation went awry, and the ending was a huge shock as well. We also get more updates on Dom, the FBI agent who was threatened to join the Dark Army, and Darlene, sister of Elliot. Their scenes are just okay. I just love one of the Dom scenes where she was secretly threatened by the Dark Army at all times. And the ending is insane. It was such a ballsy move for the writers, and speaking of which, the head writer, the creator, Sam Esmail, had a cameo. And that's sweet. In the beginning of 402 Payment Required, there's a very amazing intro before the title sequence where Philip Price basically narrates over the history of Eve of Evil Corp, a montage, and afterwards he agreed to cooperate with Elliot to take down the Dark Army, which is something that I've never expected in season one, but here we are. 
The rest of the episode is relatively slower than the first one, but the scenes are still interesting enough to keep my attention. We also get to see more of Dom feeling pressured by the Dark Army, being paranoid, which I thought was portrayed really well. The ending of the episode has a strange twist. Apparently, Darlene told Elliot that Vera had returned, but it wasn't Elliot Elliot or Mr. Robot Elliot. And for a moment, I thought both Rami Malek and Christian Slater is going to turn to the camera and say, it's you, isn't it? That would have been neat, but still, there's a third Elliot and I'm excited about that at that point after watching the episode anyways. The pacing of the series continues to tone down on episode 3, 403 Forbidden, which isn't a bad episode, just a slow one. We get a lot of White Rose flashbacks, which aren't bad, but I don't find them particularly interesting. And all the actors who are supposed to be Chinese in this show aren't really native Chinese people, so their Mandarin is not that fluent and it's really obvious. And since episode 1, since Elliot had shut us out, his friend, Mr. Robot talked to us instead. Or in other words, Christian Slater's doing the narration, and it's friggin' fantastic. The line about playing Russian roulette is a bit campy, but works really well with the tone of the story. Elliot also somehow found love on this episode, which really surprised me, especially for how impulsive the whole thing seemed. And the ending is quite the surprise as well. The pacing of the show hits a new low with episode 4, 404, not found. Yeah, the famous 404 error. But instead of being bored by the slow pace, I'm actually impressed at how beautiful and poignant this episode is. It's just one of those slow bottle episodes that impressed me a lot. It's not as heartfelt as Don't Delete Me. And instead, this episode is artsy, abstract, and very gloomy. We have the two minor storylines with Darlene having to send a drunk Santa Claus back home, getting to know him, sharing feelings, which I thought is a very beautiful message that everybody has feelings. Everybody has their own pains and hardships. I mean, the person sitting across you right now have emotions too, and maybe he or she is just hiding it. Who knows? Or maybe no one's sitting across you. Maybe you're alone in the room. So maybe the guy in the next room is feeling lonely as well. Who knows? Anyways, the other minor storyline is more of an exploration in loneliness and paranoia. Dom gets off to a video of Darlene because she was just so lonely. Then she proceeded to sex chat with people online and has a dream where she invited the person to her place, only to find out that the person works with the Dark Army. The big storyline is where Elliot and Tyrell Wellick had to handle this dead body because this guy were following them, so Tyrell hit him. But except he's not really dead, so he drove the van and left. Now, Elliot and Tyrell had to walk through the woods in the snow to get to the nearest place to get signal for phone, and Elliot and Tyrell bonded. Elliot had this cold-blooded, apathetic attitude at first, but when Tyrell was in danger, Elliot actually secretly cared for him, which I think is absolutely beautiful. However, at the end, Tyrell Wellick disappeared into the mist in the middle of the night, and a weird glowing blue-purple light appeared and distracted Tyrell, and then the screen turned white and the end credits rolled. And it's, uh, it's very head-scratching. I really wanted and still want to know what happened to Tyrell. Yeah. Uh, but still, this is an absolutely beautiful and ethereal ending for the episode. Moving over to episode 3, episode 5, my bad, episode 5, 405, Method Not Allowed. And uh, holy shit, Sam Esmail is online, because this episode is one of the most intense and suspenseful and cleverly written episodes of Mr. Robot so far. Other than, a, the, other than a few small scenes involving Dom and a weird little scavenger hunt involving Philip Price, these scenes serve as palate cleansing breaks. This episode mainly revolves around Elliot and Darlene infiltrating the virtual realty building with its servers performing a heist, hacking into the building and get access into Cyprus National Bank where the Dark Army hid their money. And here goes their plan. 
Darlene pretends to be one of the workers with a forged card, goes into the building and distract the security guy so that Elliot could sneak in and rush into the basement and upload Darlene's profile into the staff list so that the security guy could check it and let Darlene in. Next, Darlene leaves her phone with a security guard. The security guard picks up and hands to hands it to Darlene. Now Darlene has his fingerprints. Darlene and Elliot joins uh, together at the seventh floor and print the security guard's fingerprints and make a mold out of it and then make a fake finger out of it so that they will have fingerprint access to all the other blocked areas in the building. Three, ninth floor, the server room. They plug their computers to the server and hack into the Cypress National Bank server. Meanwhile, Elliot shut the CCTVs down for 40 minutes so they had limited time. However, their plan went awry, of course, because there were just so many variables. The security guard figured out what happened and went to the ninth floor and they were running out of time. Another security guard showed up and called the cops. It was a shit show. What's crazy is that all this went down without a single line. It was all in silence. And uh, I almost forgot to talk about uh, Mac Quayle's music in this episode is fucking amazing. The clicks and the clacks, the intense synths and keys. Anyways, I'm throwing a spoiler alert. So, the CCTVs went back on for a brief second and Elliot immediately shut the power down. Darlene and Elliot finished the hack and escaped ASAP, escaped through the stairs, and the security guards chased after them. When they wanted to leave the building, the cops came and they had nowhere to run. So Darlene hid in the stairwell and Elliot distracted the cops by running out of the building and getting chased. And what came after was one of the most intense and well shot foot chase scenes in TV history. Elliot ran through streets, Central Park, an ice skating rink, hopped onto a bus, jumped off of the same bus, got hit by a car, and jumped off a cliff. Yes, just to outrun the cops. It was blood pumping and nerve wracking. However, I have one pro tip. If you are getting chased by anyone, no matter is it a cop or, or anyone, you know what? You can just change your clothes and pretend to be another person and then you can be disguised. It doesn't work all the time, especially if those people are up close and, and they see your face. But uh, if you're far away, that trick definitely helps. Over to 406 not acceptable, which isn't a climactic or eventful episode, but it's another deeply emotional or intense episode. We have three storylines mainly. For one, Elliot tried to use Olivia to get to her boss so that he could get total access to the Dark Army Cypress, Na Cypress National Bank account. Two, Dom was ordered to kill Darlene after a photo of Darlene and Elliot were discovered by the Dark Army. And three, Vera kidnapped Krista. Vera is such a great villain, his actor really gave rhythm and music to his lines. His villain is almost Tarantino-esque, but I guess with dialogues as centric as a good as male dialogue should be. And Krista didn't just give some normal reaction either, she's a special character too. The scenes between Elliot and Olivia were heartbreaking and emotionally conflicting, and the scenes between Dom and Darlene are really suspenseful. Dom was secretly in love with Darlene, but had to kill her in order to save her family. What will she do? What will Darlene do? Both of them are also special characters and the episode ended with a sudden crazy cliffhanger. Then it's 407 proxy authentication required. And it's one of the most special TV episodes I've ever seen. The entire episode takes place in two connected rooms with five characters and it's all talking. Well, actually six technically. You'd think it's a slow, boring episode, but actually it isn't. It is one of the most emotionally traumatizing episodes I've ever watched on TV. There is almost no music throughout the whole episode. It's separated into five acts. And for the first three acts, it's Vera and Elliot talking to each other. And on the third act, Krista joins the conversation. But since Vera and Elliot are such three-dimensional and well-written characters, their interactions never bored me. And the revelation of Mr. Robot to Vera is fantastic as well. I always admire how fearless Mr. Robot is. On the fourth act, the darkest secret of the entire series is revealed, explaining Elliot's behavior since episode 1, and the tension leading up to that revelation is enough to crack someone's skull open. It's extremely intense and it actually gave me a headache while watching the episode. It's crazy. But when the secret is revealed, it is 
absolutely shocking. Only Mr. Robot, Vera, Elliot, and Krista were in that scene, and everybody's acting in that scene is fucking brilliant. The face Rami made when he found out about the secret was breathtaking absolutely heartbreaking and stomach churning as well. Mr. Robot's voice cracks when begging Krista not to reveal the truth, Krista's pressure and Vera crying for Elliot, absolutely stunning. And then we have the last 10 seconds of the episode, which is this shocking expectation subversion scene. I totally didn't see that coming, but at the same time I kinda did, and it's crazy. While this episode isn't eventful or action-packed, this episode crushes spirits and it's one of the most powerful hours in television ever. Afterwards, we have 408 request timeout, where Elliot has his timeout. After the emotional trauma that Elliot went through last episode, he had this very much needed cool down. But at the other end, in Darlene and Dom's storyline, things got super intense. Without spoiling much, I must say that unexpected violence took place and they are all very tense. Again, Sam Esmail is already a master at writing and directing tension at this point. The reactions that Darlene and Dom gave to the threat that they faced were also interesting and Darlene started to learn that Dom had affections for her and it and not only is it LGBTQ representation done right but also romantic feelings done right in general. The ending is great, it came out of nowhere, at the same time it's distressing, it's another fantastic episode. However, 409 Conflict is, I think, the best episode of the season so far. Just the intelligence of the writing and the large scale that this episode has makes this episode one of the best of the series so far. Basically, following Elliot and Darlene's plan to take down the Dark Army and the Deus group, the top 1% of the 1%, they already had access to the Cyprus National Bank server, now all they need are the group's accounts and make the money transfer and bankrupt their asses. Something this difficult and large in scale comes with all sorts of obstacles, especially when White Rose started to realize something's wrong and decided to hold the Deus group gathering in another venue, while having a private conversation with Philip Price at another venue, causing Darlene and Elliot to split up respectively. Elliot had to stay behind and get White Rose's number, Darlene had to improvise her plan and scare the people of the Deus group into making phone calls, and from the cell tower she gathers all their phone numbers, thus their accounts. This also caused a lot of public attention, and an impulsive violent incident took place. Yes, while that scene is really shocking, but we all knew it's gonna happen at some point. Seeing White Rose panic like this is truly refreshing and it just shows how smart Elliot can be. Also, I forgot to mention that the whole, uh, th the first shot of the episode with Christian Slater's silhouette is really damn beautiful. Over to 410 gone. It's just so cool that these HTTP error names are actually fitting as episode titles as well. And after the crazy previous episode, Gone is a cooldown episode where little to nothing actually happens. For the entirety of the episode, Dom and Darlene left New York City and tried to run away and hide from the Dark Army and the FBI. And while this episode might be the least interesting and least eventful, Joey Badass as Leon and Bobby Cannavale as Irving <laughs> Joey Badass as Leon and Bobby Cannavale as Irving, Irving are fantastic. Their appearances always steal the scene. And then we have the ending, where we get bamboozled really, really hard, or more like the characters get bamboozled really, really hard. Originally, this thing is supposed to happen to uh, Dom, and that other thing is supposed to happen to Darlene. Then this huge change of mind happened, and then they basically switched positions, and it's crazy. Afterwards, we have episode 11, Exit with a small letter E and a capital letter X. And since it isn't 411 length required, we know that this episode is about to be fucking insane, and indeed, it is. My mind was totally shattered, completely shattered, and deep fried and destroyed after watching this episode. The scale of the twist that this episode gave is so large in scale, it shattered all expectations, completely changed the overview of Mr. Robot and the genre as well. And only someone like Sam Esmail would be able to pull off something this ridiculous towards the end of the show and still keep the quality of the show. On this episode, Elliot went to the Washington Township power plant, which is actually White Rose 
Rose's ultimate goal, and Elliot had to ruin White Rose's plan by going to the plant himself and install a malware. And then what happened afterwards is history. Or is supposed to be history, but now completely from another level, I'm throwing a spoiler alert. So the Dark Army found Elliot before the police did, after Elliot arrived at the Washington Township power plant. The guy in the white hazmat suit eating a sandwich is back. Then they sent Elliot to White Rose's room where Angelo went to in season 3, in season 2 actually, and White Rose showed up. Both White Rose and Elliot gave epic monologues after this. Then White Rose mentioned the real purpose of her plan and it is to create a parallel universe. Yes. And then all of a sudden, White Rose picked up a gun and shot herself and died. And we're not even at the end of episode 11. We're not even at the end of the series. What in the fuck? The entire facility had started to shake and alarm lights were turned on. The power plant was having a meltdown and the entire town were doomed to die, including Elliot himself. And in a few seconds, Elliot went from what the hell is going on to, okay, I'm gonna die here. Here are my last words. And then the whole thing exploded and Elliot died and so did everyone else. But before that, Elliot even played a little video game called Exit in an old school computer um, for some reason. Which I think somehow deactivated the uh, power plant from completely melting down. But at that point, it seemed like it was too late. And then we were shown a red screen which faded and then we see Elliot waking up in a, on a bed in a nice apartment playing a record, being all happy and relieved, Skyping with Angela, calling his dad who's alive and is a nice guy now. He went to work as the CEO of Allsafe and he's about to have a meeting with F Corp. And the CEO of F Corp is Tyrell Willick who's alive and well. This has to be one of the most confusing TV moments of all times. It feels like I'm watching a Lost, where in the beginning it's all about surviving, but then we slowly find out that time and space and reality and existence don't matter all that much anyway, because it's already beyond that. And then we have the ending, where the parallel universe Happy Elliot sees himself in his own apartment asking, who are you? And at long last, we have the series finale, which is two hours long and is separated into two parts. And holy fucking shit this has to be one of the best tv series finales ever for all season i was craving for something trippy and mind-blowing and sam esmail had answered my calls and made a hell of a trippy series finale and this finale also features two twists the last twist being the most gigantic twist of it all totally debunking everything that had happened before on the show only Sam Esmail could pull something this ridiculous off and get away with it. I'm legitimately shocked. And after the finale, I was left speechless. It was just eye-widening to me. Admittedly, it's not the most satisfying or action-packed series finale of all times. It didn't really wrap up everything ever because it's actually really difficult to do that. But the way it ended just blows my mind so much so that it left a hole in my mind. Of course, I'm giving a spoiler alert. Yay. So, for the first part of the series finale, we have Elliot waking up in the parallel universe, following his dad around, visiting his old house, visiting his mom, visiting Angela's parents, being confused at first, but then convinced that White Rose's machine worked and a parallel universe was actually created. All the events on this episode line up with all the events on the previous episode after the explosion. At the end of the episode, he met himself in his own apartment and an earthquake happened, his other self slipped and hit his head and was injured, so the original Elliot made a choice to kill his other self so that he could take his place and be happy once and for all. For the second part, Elliot had to prepare for the big day, that is his wedding with Angela. He put on nice clothes and put his other self's body in a paper box and tried to hide him, except he almost got busted by Dom, who is apparently a cop now. Anyway, Elliot managed to escape and he was on a subway train to the beach where the wedding took place. He arrived there and saw that all the people in his wedding were sitting still, wearing the same clothes, wearing F-Society masks. Then Mr. Robot came out and revealed that this wasn't even a parallel universe. It was an imaginary world made up by Elliot. My mouth is 
very tired right now. Elliot was in denial at first, and he followed Angela back to F Society Arcade, where the exact scene from Season 1 Episode 4 happened again. Then he realized it was all fake. There was no parallel universe to begin with. And then suddenly, everyone's faces became Mr. Robot's face, Christian Slater having his own Aphex twin moment, and then Tyrell showed up and shot Elliot. Elliot then woke up in Krista's office, except it wasn't really Krista. Krista went over all the personalities that Elliot had created, including us, the viewers, aka Friend, one of the best fourth wall breaks in TV history. And then Krista revealed that Elliot we see is actually just a personality as well. He was never the real Elliot. What in the fuck? And it all makes sense now. This is the reason why he forgot about his dad and his sister in the beginning, and the Elliot we saw was just the mastermind Elliot. At the end of Mastermind, Elliot woke up on his bed in hospital in tears with Darlene by his side, and apparently Darlene knew that this isn't Elliot all along, but never said anything. So Mastermind Elliot finally gave up control, went into Elliot's mind room, and joined the rest of his personalities, including us, in a cinema. I guess watching life through the real Elliot's eyes while taking the back seat. And then we see the film projector, which transforms into a Kubrick Stargate wormhole where flashes of memories fly by at the sides, and the wormhole became the pupil of the real Elliot, who just woke up on the hospital bed, and Darling returned and said, Hello, Elliot. This pretty much debunks the whole Elliot story, even though all the F Society, 5 9, E Corp, Dark Army stuff still happened. But this is almost like Sam Esmail saying, ha, it was all a lie and it's still a spectacular run. So, um, yeah, overall, Mr. Robot's final season is the best Mr. Robot season. Also, one of the best TV seasons ever, on par with the final season of Breaking Bad. But instead of being super action packed, this season is more emotionally traumatizing and mind blowing. The gargantuan and ambitious twists and turns of this season are absolutely shocking. 401 is a nerve-wracking opener, 404 is a strange and poetic cool-down, 405 is a hell of an intense action-packed episode, 407 is one of the darkest and emotionally challenging episodes ever, 409 is extremely intelligent and satisfying, 411 shatters my brain, and the finale is basically the ultimate punch in the cerebrum. The music by Mac Whale is as glitchy, jittery, and awesome as ever. The performances by Rami Malek, Christian Slater, Elliot Villar, Carly Chaikin, Grace Gummer, Martin Wallström, Michael Christopher, Gloria Rubin, and of course, B.D. Wong are all amazing. Not forgetting to mention Joey Badass and Bobby Cannavale. If I have a gripe with the season, it's that the editing and the cinematography isn't as eccentric as seasons 1 and 2. It's slower, more stable, more wide shots, but it's still very good though. Every episode brings a different vibe, brings something different to the table, and I'm just really, really impressed. So uh, yeah, my favorite episode is... um. I don't even know. I guess my personal favorite is 409 Conflict, but I mean 401 is great, 405 is great, 407 is great, 411, the finale, they're all great. And my least favorite episode is 410 Gone. I'm saying Mr. Robot Season 4 is mind-blowing, and I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. So, have you seen Mr. Robot Season 4 from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more. Thanks for watching. This is the last review that I'm ever going to do in this decade. So, thanks for watching.